All right, folks, welcome back to this beautiful Saturday afternoon. It's about 2.30 p.m. This is the absolute most gorgeous, beautiful, great feeling, 32 degrees I think I've ever felt. You'd swear it's 42, but it is not. Give you a small bird's eye view here. Obviously, you're looking at the heifer lot there. Uh... That sun has just been almighty powerful here the last couple few days. Even if not below freezing, of course, we're talking 32. Uh, it goes without saying. I'm speaking the obvious. We get a lot of melting. And, uh, yeah. Makes a person get really itchy. Really itchy for spring. True spring. Fieldwork spring which, of course, is uh, a pretty fair ways away. <coughs> <coughs> Just very thankful for all that snow that we've uh, gotten here in the last three weeks or so because it, uh, it was getting pretty, pretty serious. Something's not right when you're kicking dust up in the month of February when you're spreading manure. <laughs> okay, one of my little... One of my little stupid odds and ends here today was to stock the barn. Stock the barn with small squares of hay and some straw. Uh, I was completely depleted here this morning. There's two shoots in the hay mow. This is one, and this is the one I'm always using just because that's the side that I like dealing with, whatever. Uh, they usually look like Fort Knox there. Uh, of course, in the wintertime, cold weather, obviously a lot of heat likes to escape from there. That's why you're kind of seeing what you're seeing here. Uh, it goes quick, doesn't it? It goes real quick. Uh, I didn't exactly pile the most amount of damn hay ever in this hay mow here this past year, but it is amazing how fast it does go. It does go. Now, we're going to be just fine. Uh, I'm, you know, the only square bale feeding going on now is the bulls down the pens in the barn, eight bulls. But it also feeds dad's three horses. And those buggers, uh, they go through hay. Um, to put things into perspective, and I'm not playing a game on you here. Uh, <laughs> for most part of the winter, I've had the eight bulls and 10 TLC calves. That's what I'm going to start calling them from here on out. TLC calves. Well, dad gets his hay from this side. I get my hay from this side. Now, there was a couple extra three tiers on this side, uh, most of the way this way. But, uh, <laughs> holy crap. You know, if it sounds like I'm annoyed, I'm not at, at all. Dad and I actually have a, a pretty fantastic deal for the both of us, I believe. Um. <clears throat> You know, in the summertime, um, this is actually personal business, but what the hell. Um, you know, Dad, uh, Dad doesn't own this farm anymore, respectfully. Uh, he is compensated by moi for doings, and that's the way it should be. Uh, but we have a real nice deal um, on small square haymaking any cutting raking or baling now i don't i don't have dad up here piling hay anymore i had a couple emergencies last year we had he had to offload a couple bales till i waited for another person to come a couple wagons but uh any cutting raking and baling small squares is uh is an even steven um there's no compensation from my end for that time spent and there's a lot of time there but of course, you know, that's where his horse hay comes from. Uh, I, think, uh, I think we both enjoy that deal. Um, don't get me wrong, that doesn't have to be a deal, okay? It just, uh, I'm betting most of you can understand what I'm saying. It's a, pretty, it's a pretty good ordeal. There, it made a lot of sense, didn't it? So, yeah. Yeah, works out pretty nice. Uh, 
yeah, it is dwindling. I will say that. I do not need to do numbers, though. I can just tell you by what I'm looking at here to tell you that everything is good. Uh, between uh, the rest of the time for the bulls to be on this. And um, dad's horse hay until more hay is made. I keep looking at this and I want to think differently, but uh, anyway. I've been very conservative on straw this year. Uh, in fact, I should have and could have been more. I did not go through but two bales of soybean straw, which is pretty stinking lazy. Um, by the time I needed more, they're all piled outside and uh, full of snow and all that other stuff. I decided just to be very conservative with the straw I'm using. Just, you know, bed lightly, but don't cheat the animals. So I'm pretty happy with this because this means I need to buy just, you know, that much less coming up this year. Uh, if you don't know, I don't deal in small grains anymore. Therefore, I must buy my straw. And uh, I'm okay with that. It's not like I'm... It's not like I'm going through a lot. So, a couple of videos ago, I spoke about some changes that are coming here. Uh, they are. They're done deals. Uh, we will do a sit-down live stream on it, make it fun. Uh, <clears throat> the regiment and structure of this farm is changing, uh, I dare say, significantly. It seems significant to me anyway. Uh, and one of the changes you're going to be seeing is a very full, full, full hay mow of hay. So making, uh, let's just say 3,000, 4,000 small squares in a year, that needs to double. And uh, we're going to go through that at an appropriate time, folks, when I have my words correct and all my information in front of me. Uh, more than willing to share it with you. Because it is exciting, and uh, a lot of you have been following us. That, that's what this channel is for. Not for educational purposes, I can tell you that. Just kind of share the life with you here. But, uh, yeah, you're going to see a lot of changes this year. Maybe not in the beginning, but uh, you will. i stop there. That's it. That's all I have. Had a little bit of time to burn. My afternoon's been going really good. Of course, I got evening chores starting up here about four, quarter after four. <coughs> I do believe until that time comes, I'm going to uh, take some of the uh, my large round bales of dry hay apart. Because um, even with this beautiful weather, as we both know, when they're stacked, you know, ice forms and it, it keeps. So I do believe I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to go grab about four, five, six, seven bales and set them out in my little makeshift yard here. One thing at a time. <clears throat> Show you what I did here uh, this morning before lunch. Yes, that is a brand new 3-6 ring. That's what we call them, a 3-6 Sioux. Spit an image to that. We'll talk about that later. I'm embarrassed to tell you that's been sitting there for two years. <coughs> I had a plan for it. I'm very happy that I did not follow through with that proposed plan. But... Uh, I got something brewing here. Okay. Uh, I went after a bigger load than normal. Uh, I think it was 11 bales. This stuff here. This is the best feed I've fed all winter other than corn silage. The cows will take this and turn it into dust within no time at all. 
Now, what this is, this is that alfalfa field that has been in question. It's not in question anymore. But you're seeing grass. This is first crop. When I did this, of course, we're talking the uh, latter part of June, whatever the hell the date was, it got away from me. Um, as far as my, my day's allotment uh, between cutting, baling, and wrapping, I had something pop up, which wasn't a big deal, but we had... We basically had mid-August weather for a little bit there in late June, and that stuff just dried down like it's nobody's business. If you were to make me guess, and I'm awful at this, this was probably baled and wrapped at about 30%, maybe, maybe. And it just turned out beautiful. Now, I, I don't intend to bale feed at that moisture content this is just the way it happened and uh there is zero zero mold um, of any kind versus the low moisture second crop alfalfa uh i won't be doing this again won't be doing it now this is not the end of the world and the cows are eating this up like it's nobody's business as well. But that doesn't need to be. It's on me. I will not be making that stuff again. It's either high moisture or dry. Bone dry for wrapping. And by the way, I do plan on wrapping some bone dry hay this year. But that's this stuff is just ridiculous. Uh, it's just fantastic. I did have a couple of rips in here from deer hooves. This is the line that was next to the destroyed line. But um, they didn't mess with very much, except for a couple spots. This, this is one of maybe a few. And that is from a deer hoof. <coughs> anyway. Yeah, unbelievable stuff. Unbelievable. That's all I got here, folks. I'm gonna haul some hay. See what other kind of trouble I can get into before chores and see what kind of trouble I can get into after that. <laughs> Might go barking at the moon later. I don't know, we'll see what happens. That's it, I hope everybody's doing okay. Hope your weather's treating you fair where you are as well. Um, this, is just, uh, this is just beautiful. Feels good, feels good on this beautiful head of hair. And, uh, that's it. We're going to talk to you sooner or later.